Thank you very much guys for tuning on to my channel today. This is your favorite babe, your favorite Titi, Kirsty Valentine. Love. I have seen this news trending all over the place on social media and I ignored it. I refused to talk about it because it hurts so much. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today. This is your favorite babe, your favorite TT, Kirsty Valentine. I wish you all love and peace. I'm here today because it's something that has been bothering my heart and I felt that I needed to talk about it. I tried my very, very best to ignore it, but the feeling and the urge gets stronger and stronger every time I try to push it behind, at the back of my mind, and just push it away from me, you know. But it keeps coming up and coming up. It's about this uh, night, uh, the head of uh, Vocados, um, what's his name? Um, he died. He sadly lost his life due to the decisions he made when he employed the services of a young uh, night crawler worker. I wouldn't want to use the popular name uh, because I feel it's quite demeaning. So I wouldn't want to use that sort of name. That's how emotional and how I feel about this issue now according to reports because i've been going back to read reports about the whole issue i've been reading reports i've been getting myself constantly updated according to the reports now that it's going on found out after doing my research that the so-called unfortunate incident happened before the year 2020 and that was in 2019 and this man has so-called been buried uh, since, uh, before Christmas, uh, before December and that his wife, uh, this gentleman's wife, ordered that his, um, the so-called uh, young lady in question who happened to call for help, who tried in her possible best to revive this man, who called um, for, her, for, for help to help, you know, not that she ran away, she could have, um, has been castrated and, and, and left in custody. Um, this brings into question me. This is how I feel about the Nigerian law uh, guideline, uh, guidelines and persecution, you know, defense, uh, you know, the whole judicial Nigerian system really, really needs questioning, really needs to be looked into because I cannot understand in the world of me why such a young, honest, vulnerable uh, night crawler could be castrated and put into custody when she was innocent in the first place. First of all, Let's start with the family of this young woman. I don't know what kind of family she's from. So, I mean, with the video, if you look at her when she was talking, if you look at her, her, her countenance, if you look at her body, she's a very young, young girl. And, you know, I doubt if she's up to 21 or 20. She could be, she could be, it could be that she has a younger look. Some people, uh, in their 20s or 40s but when you see them you think they're 18 or 20 so it could be she's blessed with the young baby look but from what she was saying with her voice her body language and everything you can tell that this girl was scared out of her wits she was scared, so scared out of her body she was she's naive she's innocent it, it seems to me that she's somebody who has been pimped out to do that sort of job. It seems to me she, she comes from an underprivileged background. It seems to me she is doing what she's doing 
out of poverty just to survive. She's from Akwaimbo, and the incident happened in Agbo. And this so-called victim, he lived with his wife and his family in Abuja. So you can see the difference. A young girl like that from Akwaibo is in Agbo, hawking uh, alcohol uh, drinks in the day in the restaurant. And then at, at night, she goes to do her night calling business. You know, she has no acts for this guy. This man, a 60-year-old man, came for her. And unknowing to her, he had numerous drugs. I'm going to insert the pictures of the so-called drugs. He overdosed himself. He took a lot of job, uh, drugs just to enable him to perform, to satisfy that child. If you look at the picture of that girl, she's old enough or young enough. She is young enough to be his first grandchild and old enough to be one of his children. So the question being is that how many times has this man done this and gotten away with it? And at this time, he became unfortunate. So if you look at the background of that girl, I don't think that if she comes from a supportive family, a family where there is love, she would leave Akwaibom, where she comes from, to go to Agbo in Delta State, which is out of her state, to get involved and do what she was doing, get involved with this mess. The family of this girl needs questioning. It breaks my heart that in Nigeria, the police and the ju judicial system find it so lazy unscrupulous act to do and carry out a thorough investigation. In the Western world, where I am, when an incident happened, you got forensics, you got a special department in the police force who comes to the crime scene to investigate and take forensic evidence. They begin to build the case. From when they build the case, they begin to ask questions around. And from there, they develop a person of interest. When they develop a person of interest, from the stage of person of interest, they have a suspect. And they begin to ask questions and investigate. They don't harass this person. They even ask their suspect that they should get a lawyer because they are, cannot be found guilty and castrated without evidence. While the investigation is going on, they are building evidence and they have proof. The person or suspect, when they are so satisfied with him being, this person being a suspect, then it now goes to prime suspect. And when it gets to prime suspect, that is when the beauty case, it gets a defense team, you get the um, Persecuting persecution lawyers and the case goes to court. And even while the case is in court, they have the judiciary who are biased. People are taken and selected from different parts of, of, of the state or the city, from different backgrounds and different professional levels to sit on the judiciary, to start from start sitting in the judiciary to hear the case. They are the ones who say guilty or not guilty or equals case. This is the judiciary system. That shows where the Nigerian judicial system and the security system is in Nigeria. It has digressed 100 years back to the time we had policy. Back to the time we didn't have policy. It's come back. You do not put a girl like that and get her castrated and she doesn't even have any legal team. I'm not sure she has a legal team. I don't know what they are doing. Because if she has a legal team, she wouldn't be under behind bars. Because clearly, this girl wasn't aware. If you listen to that interview, she wasn't even aware that he had those drugs with him. She wasn't even aware that he had those drugs with him and he took 
those drugs with him. It was only when the police came in and she was there, they were interviewing her and videoing her and they were searching his things that they saw drugs. Even you could hear in the background where the detectives, the investigation officers and the police were talking and saying, my God, this it is the, the drugs is too much and for his age. I have seen videos where a woman, I, I saw a video where a woman was saying, blaming the wife of this man. You cannot blame a wife of a man when he told his wife he was going to Agbo to see to the project that he was doing. And then he called a, another rich girl for intimacy. You know, it, 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 it beats me how society, how women, are so judgmental on their fellow women. We shouldn't beat each other down. Rather, we should raise each other up. We need positivity. And then it goes back to the family of the deceased. You know, it, it brings me into questioning the sort of people that we have around us. The sort of people we say they are our lawyers who are supposed to protect the community who are supposed to educate the community on your right because I believe no matter what circumstances or background that you have you have your own right you have your own fundamental human right and it has not been a exercise in this case in a society where things like this happen you should take your brother you should take your brother in you should take your husband in and go and bury him silently and deal the way with it and let it go and let it pass. Not the way it has become now, where it has now become a scandal. This is a man who is a qualified lawyer. He is educated. This is a man who, whose wife worked at the central bank. So they were well off and well to do. This is a man who is a senior knight in a Catholic church. So he knew better. He knew what he was doing. And he is responsible for the decisions he's, he made. And now look at the circumstances. Unfortunately, he has gone to meet his maker because of drugs over and overdose. He, 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 he took drugs just to perform with a young child that he could have suffocated with all that weight he was carrying. She's a very, very tiny girl. And we want to seize this opportunity to plead with that woman who lost her husband due to the decisions that he made to please have mercy on that child. That child, that girl could be your child. That girl could be your little sister. That girl could be anyone close to you. If this had happened to her, would you be happy when someone has put your little relative and that girl behind bars. So I'm using this opportunity to plead with this woman, please release that child. That child needs reorientation. She, 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 she needs habilitation. She needs treatment. She needs education. She needs support. She needs encouragement. She needs love. I also want to seize this opportunity to beg the first lady of Delta State to intervene in this. I also use this opportunity to beg the first lady of Aqua Ibo, please intervene and release this girl and let her go. Please support her. Give her education. Give her support. Empower, empower her. We talk of women empowerment every day. Yet a woman whose husband made the wrong decision and let her down as her husband has asked that a young night caller who is young enough or old enough to be her granddaughter or her own child be castrated and put behind her bars. She never killed your husband. She never asked your husband to come for, come for her. She wasn't even, even having an affair with your husband. Your husband made that decision knowing fully well he was committed to you, that he had a marital contract with you, his wife. So madam, I'm pleading, release that child. I'm asking, the women group in Nigeria should intervene in this and let that girl be released. She needs education, she needs support, she needs love, she needs care, she needs education, she needs empowerment. So I thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today. Like I said, it's a very short video. I really don't have much to say. It's hurting me. I've let it out. I can have peace of mind. Until our next video, I say peace and love.